Coming up on today's show, Tesla extends free supercharging for Model S and Model X customers, but there's a small catch. The scandal as Volkswagen and other automakers are accused of testing diesel emissions on monkeys, and Elon Musk's boring company sells out of flamethrowers while simultaneously upsetting a California legislator. These stories and more coming next. Happy Friday, everyone. It's that time of week when we blast through this week's news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. And this week is no exception. So let's head to Tesla for our first story, where it's been tweaking its highly successful Model S and Model X referral program. First up, Tesla's essentially extended its free unlimited supercharging policy for new Model S and Model X owners, despite officially ending it last year. That's because Tesla has decided to extend its policy of offering free unlimited supercharging for the ownership of the car to anyone who makes use of a Tesla referral code when ordering their car. And right now, pretty much everyone who orders a Model S or a Model X is making use of a referral code, and to incentivize those existing owners into continuing to share their referral codes, Tesla has yet again changed its referral program reward scheme, this time offering the Tesla customer with the most referrals between February 1st and April 30th the chance to race a Tesla Semi around the company's test track. And in the spirit of Top Gear, there will be a leaderboard posted to Tesla's app leaderboards of the fastest times. Okay then. French automaker Renault may not be offering you a chance to drive a Tesla Semi as fast as you can around a test track, but it has just announced a new incentive scheme in the UK where it will give commercial customers a £2,000 sterling discount off a brand new Renault Kangoo ZE 33 if they trade in their old internal combustion van in the process. The only catch? Their vehicle has to be one registered before December 2010, so this is certainly a scheme designed squarely at independent traders and small businesses who haven't upgraded their vehicle in a number of years. Sadly, it doesn't appear to be available to private customers, so it's only going to be applicable if you run a business. It's also not clear if this is being offered outside the UK, but I'm guessing a similar scheme may eventually roll out to other markets if the UK one proves successful. With it being the start of February, it's time to look back over the US sales figures for EVs during January. And while overall new car sales in the US were pretty good, it seems that 2018 got off to a slower start for electric vehicles than the end of 2017, with less than half the number of Chevrolet Bolt EVs and Volt range extended EVs selling in January then December. Nissan sold just 150 LEAF EVs too, partly because the new 2018 LEAF hasn't really started leaving dealer lots yet. With the month just started, other figures haven't rolled in yet, but it seems the fact that the US federal government was considering ending the tax incentive for EVs may have been a contributing factor to higher sales in December and lower sales in January. I guess we'll have to see how the rest of the year fares, but don't worry too much, because winter sales for EVs are always a little bit slow. Alongside the sales report for January, this week saw the release of California DMV's annual report into autonomous vehicle testing in the state, and it shows some really interesting things, like the number of miles tested by each automaker and company in the state last year. On top of the list is Google, or rather Waymo, whose fleet of 75 autonomous vehicles covered more than 350,000 miles in the state, with 63 human takeover events. That's places where the driver took control of the vehicle. GM's crews, meanwhile, came in second with 125,000 autonomous vehicle miles and 105 disengagements. Tesla, meanwhile, it drove zero autonomous miles in California in 2017, saying instead that it was using test tracks and customers' cars operating in shadow mode in order to improve its autonomous vehicle system. I'll leave you to interpret what that means. For a long time, Tesla has relied on income from its Model S and Model X lease programs to help it appear as healthy as possible on paper. And this week, we heard a rumor that it may be going one step further, selling $500 million worth of asset-backed bonds that are secured by the future income from Tesla Model S and Model X leases. It's reportedly part of a supposed plan by Tesla to raise more money to help expand the company and continue its Model 3 ramp up, and if successful, will help keep money flowing. Tesla hasn't officially announced the deal yet, but says Bloomberg, the asset-backed bonds are already 14 times oversubscribed, meaning they're in demand before they've even been released. 
With Tesla's Q4 2017 figures due next week, it's likely we'll hear more then, so I'll keep you posted when I have more information. Harley Davidson, the epitome of throaty, powerful, wind-in-your-hair, all-American cruisers, has confirmed this week that it will be bringing an all-electric model to its lineup within 18 months, pushing forward previous pledges that it would be bringing an electric motorcycle to market by 2021. Following the success and warm reception of its live wire concept motorcycle, styled a little more like a street and sport range of bikes rather than an iconic cruiser, it's likely that the new electric Harley Davidson will follow in the live wire's tire tracks and go on sale sometime next year. Price wise, it's not clear how much you'll have to pay, but don't expect much change from 20 grand. With Nissan's Leaf Electric car now very much established as an affordable family hatchback around the globe, Nissan is starting to expand its offerings to include not just electric cars, but partnerships that enable electric car owners to earn money by selling electricity back to the grid when their electric cars aren't in use. And this week, just such a scheme kicked off in the UK with the launch of a pilot project that allows owners of the next generation 2018 LEAF in certain cities the chance to participate in a V2G trial that will let them sell excess power back to the electrical grid during peak demand periods, earning the owners of the cars money even when the cars are not being driven. Nissan says typical participants should earn around £350 a year for taking part. And when I have more information on the scheme, I'll be sure to share it with you here. For the past few months, Mercedes-Benz has been teasing us with its EQ electric concepts and promising us a future where all of its models would be offered with a plug. But as I'm sure you're aware, promises aren't the same as action, especially in the EV world. Luckily, however, its parent company Daimler announced this week that it will begin production of its first EQ-branded car, the EQC SUV, in 2019 at its plant in Bremen, Germany. Following that, its Chinese subsidiary will begin production of the same car in China, and shortly after, EV production will start at three more production plants, two in Germany and one in the US. Given that Daimler is talking about investing 10 billion euros into the expansion of electric vehicles at the company, that's about a quarter of Tesla's current net worth, I think this is one to watch very carefully. Faraday Future, the troubled Chinese-backed automaker that's been fighting for its life for the past few months, has been fighting a different type of fight this week by taking two of its former employees to court over allegedly stealing the company's trade secrets and starting their own electric car company. The company in question, eVelocity, recently left Stealth and I'll admit does appear to be targeting a similar place in the market to Faraday Future. But the reason FF has taken the two to court is because they claim the two former executives were recruiting FF employees for their new startup while they were still working at Faraday Future. Without knowing the full story from either side, it's hard to say who's in the right. But as with other recent court cases, like the one between Waymo and Uber, Expect this to get very messy indeed. For the past few months, we've seen more and more of Jaguar's iPace electric car as the British company edges ever closer to introducing the all electric crossover to market. This week, Jaguar teased some footage from a recent extreme weather testing expedition in the Arctic, as well as promising that we'd see the car launched officially in its production form on March 1st just a little ahead of its official Geneva Motor Show debut. March 1st also marks the day that Jaguar will begin taking orders for the iPace. But as Autocar explained this week, customers in the UK and many other markets won't be able to make use of the iPace's 100 kilowatt onboard DC quick charging capability because there aren't yet any charging stations in the wild capable of providing that amount of power. Instead, early adopters will be stuck charging at 50 kilowatts at best dramatically increasing the amount of time it takes to fill up. Bother. It's a common practice in the automotive world to dismantle competitors' cars to try and figure out how they work, and there's perhaps no better known automotive engineering dismantling and analytical firm out there than Detroit-based Monroe & Associates. The firm, known for its praise of the BMW i3 and its construction, recently got its hands on a Tesla Model 3 to dismantle. But as Autoline Network reported this week, the firm is less than impressed with some of the Model 3's design features, especially the way in which the Model 3's frunk electronic release is difficult to operate in the event of an accident, as well as a lack of manual door releases in the rear of the vehicle. I'm guessing Monroe, which is a known fan of EVs, will make its report available when it's completed, so I'll bring you more details as I have them. 
Back in 2015, the automotive world was rocked by the Dieselgate scandal in which Volkswagen and several other automakers were found to have fitted cheat devices in various diesel-engined vehicles in order to circumvent emissions tests. And in the last week, we've heard that executives from an organization jointly set up by Volkswagen, Daimler and BMW commissioned research intended to downplay the health risks of inhaling diesel exhaust, research which included forcing monkeys to breathe diesel fumes for extended periods of time. While all three companies did indirectly play a part in the study, it seems that Volkswagen is taking the brunt of the fallout. All three companies have denounced the tests, and the executives from the independent organisation set up by the same that are responsible for the tests have stepped down. My take? It's another nail in the coffin for the internal combustion engine and the companies who continue to try and convince us that they're OK. Testing on monkeys is not. Nearly two years ago now, Volvo showcased a concept hatchback called the Concept 40.2, a vehicle based on the compact modular architecture platform at the time that Volvo showcased as being ready for a variety of different drivetrains. Now it's confirmed its first electric car, due next year, will be based on the Concept 40.2 and will feature a range of around 310 miles, that's 500 kilometers, per charge. Offering a range of modular batteries and different motors, Volvo says it hopes to accommodate a range of price points and use case scenarios, although the exact details of what we can expect are yet to be made public. And finally, aside from being known for his balls-to-the-wall disruptive attitudes to the automotive, energy and space industries, Elon Musk is also known for his ability to sell pretty much anything he sets his mind to. And that apparently includes flamethrowers. Because this week, Musk's boring company, you know, the one that he's using to dig holes in the ground for super-fast electrified travel, sold a total of 20,000 Boring Company logoed flamethrowers at $500 each. A neat way to earn the Boring Company some much-needed cash and help keep it in the spotlight, the flamethrowers are already getting Musk into trouble in California, where one lawmaker has vowed to introduce laws to block flamethrower sales to the public. They already require a permit, but I've got to agree that flamethrowers really are an unnecessary thing to keep in your garage, right? Still, they are supposedly really fun, at least according to Elon Musk. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Consider supporting the show through Patreon or if you're so inclined, send us your bitcoins at the address in the description below. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.